Hello, good day. I am Ma'am Nea and welcome to my first video lesson for the 21st century literature from Philippines and the world. So, kumusta naman kayo? Sana ay okay lang kayo dyan sa inyong kinalalagyan. Before we begin our discussion for this module, I would like to ask you to get your modules and your answer sheets and uh, put them beside you so you can uh, see your module as I am discussing with you the lessons. You may also answer the uh, answer sheets while we are having our discussion for you to be able to have a guide uh, in answering them. So let me just share to you my screen uh, so we can begin our discussion. All right, so um, I hope you're already seeing my uh, presentation. Okay, uh, this is our video lesson for module one for weeks one and two uh, of this uh, semester. So uh, your subject with me is, of course, the 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. So let us begin. So um, uh, before we begin, uh, please find a comfortable place in your house to set as your study area. While you're working on your module, focus on the lesson and task in it and avoid activities that will disrupt your attention from your study. Good luck and happy learning to all of you. So uh, again, uh, our module is module one. And in this module, we have two lessons to discuss. So for lesson one, we have geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of the Philippine liter literary history from the pre-colonial to the to the contemporary again and we also have lesson two identifying representative text from the regions for this particular video lesson i will only be discussing lesson one and then i will re-upload another video for our lesson two because uh lesson one is quite uh, long for us to have it in one uh, video lesson alone so uh, let us move on and have the objectives of this module so after going through this module you are expected to one identify geographic linguistic and ethnic dimensions of the Philippine literary history from the pre-colonial and uh, to contemporary and representative texts of the regions. Two, write a close analysis and critical interpretation of literary texts. And three, show sense of adaptability of the Philippine literary history. So those are the three objectives we have to um, acquire or uh, we have to um, uh, complete as we finish this module. So let us begin with our discussion, or before we begin with our discussion, let us have first a short test of what you know. So uh, please get your answer sheets, and in there, uh, please answer the questions 1 to 15 for what I know. And after that, we were, we're going to check them and see if you have answered correctly. All right, since you're done answering your uh, answer sheets, let us now see if you have um, uh, chosen the correct answer for each item. So for number one, during this period, the Jose Rizal's works such as Noli Mitangere and El Filibusterismo were written to awake the mind of our countrymen. So from the choices they have there, the correct answer is... A, Spanish period. That's the time when uh, Jose Rizal uh, have written uh, those uh, texts. For number two, the Philippines had literature such as legends, folk tales, folk songs, and the like. So what particular period of uh, the Philippine literature is this? Yes, the correct answer is, of course, letter C, the pre-Spanish period. So that's before the Spanish came. Number three, in this period, Religious books were written, such as Doctrina Cristiana and Urbana and Felisa, to support or contradict the Catholic Church. And of course, that particular period of the literary period is the Spanish period also. That's letter A. For number three, Filipino writers went into all forms of lit literature, like news reporting, uh, poetry, stories, play, essays and novels which clearly depicted their love of country and their longings for independence. This particular period of uh, the Philippine literature is letter B, American period. 
five. Filipino literature was given a break during this period for the Filipino literature was prohibited from using. Many wrote plays, poems, short stories, etc. Topics and themes were often about life in the provinces. And of course, your answer is correct. That is letter A, the Japanese period. Number six, haiku and tanaga were influenced by what period? So given the example or the question, of course, the answer is letter B, Japanese period. Seven, this period presented new trends in writing using modern technology. Answer, of course, is letter B, the 21st century period. Now let us go to number eight. This literary period witnessed newspapers, which were once branded crony newspapers, become instant opposition papers. This period is, of course, the EDSA period one, or the EDSA one period. That's the time of Kori Aquino, of course. Number nine, poetry during this period were during, uh, uh, poetry during this period were uh, romantic and revolutionary. The answer is, of course, letter A, the Third Republic period. For number 10, poetry during this period were dealt with patience, regard for native culture and customs. Your answer is letter D, the New Society period. 11, Philippine regional literature can be best described as? Yes, the answer is letter A, dynamic. At 12, imagery, is poetry, uh, imagery in poetry pertains to, the answer is letter A, mental pictures. For number 13, the use of vernacular in regional literature is blank. The answer is letter B, encouraged so that the culture and tradition of a people are upheld despite effects of modernity. Number 14, a valid observation of literary development in the Philippines is that blank. The answer is letter D, the literature developed alongside the Philippine history. They, they went alongside as they were written. And of course, number 15, because of the geographic nature of the Philippines, its geographical features and the presence of various ethno-linguistic groups in the country, regional, regional literature has become blank. The answer is letter C, rich and varied. So let's check uh, of the um, uh, correct items you got. And uh, don't worry if you didn't get that much. It's all right because we're just uh, testing uh, your knowledge uh, from before, your schema. If you don't have much, then it's okay because we're still going to have our discussion. So let us begin for lesson one, geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from the pre-colonial to the contemporary. That's our topic for lesson one. And according to Henry James, it takes a great deal of history to produce a little literature. In this particular lesson, you will know that um, uh, the literature that we had uh, from the different periods of uh, time in the Philippine liter literary uh, periods, uh, we'll have to deal with the history also. Yeah, and so kasama yan, alongside yan, nasinulat ng history at makikita nyo kung paano na buo yung literature natin sa pamamagitan ng mga pinagdaanan natin bilang mga Pilipino sa ating history. Okay, so uh, alright, let us begin. Okay, for your um, answer sheet in what's in uh, page 5 of your module, please answer the uh, questions. Uh, you may all answer this um, by yourself only, or you can just answer it through your mind. So, what do you know about the different literary periods in the Philippine literature? May natatandaan ba kayo from your um, lessons from elementary to uh, junior high school about the Philippine literature? So you can uh, think about those. For number two, what are the essential elements of literary pieces under different periods of literature? So if you know some of them, you can just uh, say them out loud or just in your mind. So with those in mind, let us go to uh, another task. So this is task one, literary timeline. Let us just see if you know some of the, uh, if you know the succession or the timeline of the Philippine literature. 
So you have there 10 items. So let's see if you have answered correctly. So there you have it. The answers for one is E, 2G, 3H, 4D, for five, we have A and J. For six, we have B, I, and we have, uh, for the eight, we have Third Republic, but which is not in the, uh, the choices. For number nine, we have C, and number 10 is F. Okay, so our forefathers already had their literature. You have to remember that. This reflect, these are reflected in their customs and traditions. They had their alphabet even before they were con colonized. Uh, the uh, Spanish friars burned their alphabet in the belief that they were works of devil and were written on materials that quickly perished, like the barks of trees, dried leaves, and bamboo cylinders, which could not have remained firm even if efforts were made to preserve them. Our unique geographic location is the, re the reason why we are rich. So in this particular paragraph, we have to uh, be uh, reminded or we have to understand that before even before the Spanish came, our forefathers already had their literature. Uh, they are reflected in the customs and traditions. Doon siya nakikita kung paano namumuhay sa pang-araw-araw yung mga ninuno natin, doon nakikita yung ating literature. So since wala pa nga panulat doon, noon, iba yung paraan nila ng pagpapakita ng literature. And even if they were already uh, forms of uh, written literature back then, one particular um written literature that was uh, seen back then was the alphabet. Meron na tayong sari sariling alphabeto bago pa dumating yung mga Spanish. Okay, so that's way before 1500s. Meron na tayong sariling alphabet. But the problem was that our written literature was written in yeah, in barks of trees, dried leaves, dun, dun sinusulat ano, sa, sa puno, sa bamboo. Kaya kahit anong effort ang gawin, hindi siya ma-preserve. So that's the reason why we didn't have our uh, written literature uh, pagdating sa modern time kasi hindi, hindi siya na-preserve. But even though, uh, since we have a different geographic location, iba-iba, pulu-pulu tayo, may mga part ng Philippines na nakapag-preserve ng kanilang written literature which we are going to tackle out, um, later on in our discussion. And that's why we can uh, say that our literature is really rich. Okay? So, let's go first to the terms before we uh, move on to uh, uh, deeper discussions. So we have literature. It comes from the Latin word litera, which means letters. Yeah, ganun lang, yun lang ang uh, ibig sabihin niya. It is a body of liter literary productions, either oral or written, that is considered significant and relevant to the society for a given period of time. So natandaan natin, when we uh, say literature, it it can be oral, pwede sinasabi lang siya, or it can also be written. So, um, uh, good good thing sa mga lumipas na panahon, yung mga oral literature natin, na, nakoconvert na siya into written literature. So, later on, we will discuss what are those oral literatures. So, it is significant in a specific period of time. So, iba-iba ang literatura natin, depende sa period o sa pagkakato na sa panahon na ating ginagalawan, okay, bilang mga Filipino. So next we have Philippine literature. So depiction of the uh, people's lives, thoughts, and feelings. Writers are not only those who are residents of the Philippines and its regions, but also Filipinos living in different countries. So particularly when we say Philippine literature, it actually is uh, a depiction of our lives as Filipinas, our thoughts and our feelings in a particular period of time in the Philippines. So our writers can be uh, residents in the Philippines, but in also Filipinos who are living abroad. So our language can be Filipino, or we can also use the vernacular. For example, our vernacular, it could be Bicol, um, Ilocano, Cebuano, Bisaya, Waray, and the other vernaculars that we have in the Philippines. It will also be Spanish or English. Basta sinulat ng Pilipino, it will always go down as Philippine, Philippine literature. It will always go down in the Philippine literature. So let us have the different literary periods. So we have uh, 12. Uh, we have the pre-Spanish period, the Spanish literary period, um, the period of enlightenment, the American regime, the Japanese period, Philippine literature in English, 
Uh, we also have the period of activism, period of the new society, period of the Third Republic, and of course, we also have the post Edsa One Revolution, and the latest and our time is, of course, the 21st century period. Okay, let us go uh, to the first um, period in the Philippine uh, literature, which is the pre-Spanish literature, that's BC 1564. That is when the first uh, literary evidence was found uh, in the Philippines. So as I said a while ago, before the Spaniards came, we already had our own literature. Um, and um, our ancient literature shows, uh, shows it in our customs and traditions, the everyday life of the Filipinos through the folk stories, old plays, and short stories. Yung mga kwentong kwento, no? dahil nga wala pang sulat nun masyado, uh, the literature was depicted in uh, by, by word of mouth. Ang sabi natin, by word of mouth. Oral siya. So... Uh, during this time, our ancient ancestors already had their own alphabet, and the first alphabet used by our ancestors were similar to the Malayo Polynesian alphabet, uh, which we call as Baybayin, which literally means to spell out. Ayan. Ang tawag sa ating uh, first alphabet ay Baybayin, ha? Hindi yung isang nalalaman natin. Mamaya malalaman nyo kung bakit. Okay, so it is called Baybayin. So this one, the example that you have here, is actually read as by buying yung heart na pabilog ng ganyan ay b okay and then we have y meron siyang cruz verama big sabihin pinapatay niya yung patinig and then uh, the other one yung may tuldok sa taas ay y ang ibig sabihin and so on so let's see in the example here is an example of the by buying we have the patinig a e i o u and then ang mga katinig natin we have ba kadaga halaman nga pa sa uh, tawa ya bakit ganon kasi yung ating da at ra ay iisa lang ang itsura kaya walang ra nakikita kayo de ba kasi isa lang ang itsura ng panulat ng baybay ng da at saka ng ra isa lang ano yan isang uh, uh, simbolo lang ang ginagamit. So, paano nawawala yung um, yung A, yung patinig na kasama? Nalagyan natin ng Cruz Verama, katulad ng example natin dito sa may unahan. Itong X na ito na nakikita nyo, yan ay Cruz Verama ang tawag. Pamatay, tinig. So, hindi na tayo masyadong magde-delve dyan kasi that's another subject. I'm just giving you a heads up if you want to uh, study more about it, that would be really great. Kasi nga, uh, sabi ko nga sa sarili ko, isang magandang contribution ko bilang teacher ay yung mapakilala sa inyo yung ating baybayin. Because um, I think before you should know other uh, alphabets, just like um, the um, the Korean alphabet uh, and the other alphabets that you know, I think you should learn first the Philippine uh, original alphabet, which is baybayin. Uh, sa sa baybayin kasi is if that's in Tagalog. Since we're in Tag we are Tagalog, I am uh, introducing to you baybayin. Pero sa ibang mga regions ng Pilipinas, may iba ibang tawag ng mga uh, sinaunang bay uh, sinaunang panulat na meron sila. Ano? Pero for us, the Tagalogs, we have baybayin. Okay, so here is the timeline of the uh, disappearance of the baybayin writing. Bakit nawala sa atin yung baybayin? Bakit iba ang tawag nung nakilala nyo? So this one was taken from the um, seminar. Actually, this is um, uh, a school that I... Uh, it's not actually a school. It, it is actually a modular something. It's it's a course. Yeah. It's a course that I took last summer, which uh, uh, which uh, is actually about by buying. And I could uh, give to you the links for that. this. This is a copyright by Alan Torres Camba, the, our teacher. He is, uh, that, uh, he is actually a PhD in uh, uh, language anthropology in, um, in Harvard. Siya yung teacher namin and he was the one uh, facilitating uh, and uh, giving the, uh, the the speaking about uh, by buying. Uh, so let us move on. So uh, as you can see, the first um, um, record about by buying was in 1593. So kailan lang naging, uh, ano nga tawag nyo? Uh, alibata yung uh, tinatawag yung by buying. So kailan lang yan nangyari? So actually, yan, alibata was uh, uh, was uh, 
coined by Paul, Paul Versosa. Siya yung may dahilan kung bakit may tinatawag tayong alibata, which is not the correct term for baybayin. Ano? So, kailan nangyari yan? That's only in fifth, uh, 1921. So, uh, I, we're just going to uh, uh, translate. This one is written in Spanish. We're going to translate it in English so everyone can understand. So, in 1921, I returned from the United States to give public lectures on Tagalog philology, calligraphy, and linguistics. I introduced the word alibata, which uh, found it ways into newsprints and often mentioned by many authors in their writings. I coined this word in 1914 in the New York Public Library, Manuscript Research Division, basing it uh, on the Maguindanao Moro arrangement of letters of the alphabet after Arabic Alif Ba Ta. F having been eliminated for the uh, Ephonese. So the first Spanish conquistadores and missionaries who came to the Philippines after the death of Magellan in the island of Mactan found the Tagalogs used to write their uh, spoken speech in their native system called Baybayin and equival the equivalent uh, alphabet. But the literal meaning of bye-bye is to spell out or syllabicate. So uh, as you can see, yung salitang uh, alibata ay um, um, ang may pakana niya an ay si Paul Versosa. So sinulat niya, ginamit niya lang yung salitang ali, alibata na kinuha niya from the Arabic uh, word alif bata. So inalis niya yung F kasi wala namang F sa uh, sa ating baybay. Wala namang F sa, sa salita nating mga Pilipino, di ba? So, originally wala tayong F. We just um, um, borrowed the letter F from the Americans. So, that's why we already have that, uh, that, that, that letter F. But before, wala talaga. So, naging alibata siya na wala yung F. Pero hindi yun ang original na tawag sa baybay ng Pilipinas kundi yung salitang baybay mismo which is, which means to spell out or syllabicate ayan so um yun yung patunay na uh, yung salitang alibata ay hindi tamang termino para gamitin natin when we are talking about the um Philippine um uh, uh, or the uh, the Tagalog uh, writing uh, system okay so let us now go to I hope that is clear to you. Let us now go to the next one. So what are the characteristics of the pre-Spanish literature? So uh, examples of the pre-Spanish literatures are uh, literature are one, folk tales. They are made up of stories about life, adventure, love, horror, and humor where one can drive, derive lesson. One example of that is The Moon and the Sun. Siguro alam niyo naman yung kwento sa The Moon and the Sun. And we also have a story of that in your module. So you can just read that. So next one, we also have the epic age or the epics. These are long narrative poems in which a series of heroic uh, range achievements or events usually of a hero are dealt with at length. So when we say epics, it usually talks about heroes. Ayan. So example of that is Biag Nilam Ang and many other um, uh, epic stories uh, just like in the example that I have here on the slide. So you can just go back to that and read the examples of the epic stories that we have during the pre-Spanish literature. So let's now move on to the next slide. Okay, for the third, uh, for the next slide, the ther third example of the Philippine Spanish literature are folk songs. So these are one of the oldest forms of Philippine literature that emerged in the pre-Spanish period. These songs mirror the early forms of culture. Many of these have 12 syllables. Examples of which are kundiman, kumintang, or tagumpay, ang dalit, or imno, ang uyay, o huele, dayana, soliraning, and talindaw. So we have an example here. I hope you have watched this movie because the next uh, uh, slide that I'll be showing you is an example of a uh, folk song, uh, of Philippine folk song, which was used in the modern times. So let's just hear an example. Tabang 
Okay, I I hope you have uh, watched that movie because that one is an example of a fox song, which was uh, adopted in a modern movie uh, to remind us of the uh, fox songs back then. Okay, so now let's go to uh, the next example. The fourth example are legends. So this explain how the world was created, how animals possess certain characteristics, and why some places have volcanoes, mountains, and etc. Of course, one popular example of legends are yeah, we have here ang alamat ng ng uh, ng pinya. We have the bakunawa, and we also have uh, Maria Makiling. Yeah, those are examples of uh, legends. Okay. Next we, we have next we have the myths. So these are used to explain universal and local beginnings and involve supernatural beings. So myths are based on tradition or legend, which has deep uh, symbolic meaning to the culture where they developed. So, ano to, mga, may sinisimbolo yung mga myths natin. Ano? So, it's also for, with supernaturals. So, examples we have here, yan, yung mga, ano natin, yung mga myths natin ng ating mga pinagmula ng, uh, ng tao, yung mga sirena, and uh, yung mga shokoy. And, of course, uh, 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 when we talk about myths, we also talk about the uh, uh, the gods and goddesses of the Philippines. We have the Philippine mythology that's under that. So, what are those? We also have the aswang. These are the negative. This is the these are the uh, what we call the the, the dark uh, representations of the mythology. We have the manananggal, the nunusa punso chana, uh, aswang, tikbalang, and so on. And we also have the uh, the light side of the mythology which are the gods so we have batala and so on so you can just research on them and then you will you will learn that the philippine mythology that we have is richer than the ones we have uh, learned uh, about the greek mythology and so on makikita nyo napaka interesting ng ating mga ano ng ating mythology at makikita, makikita rin kayo ng mga connection sa mga mythology ng mga popular na alam natin next we have the pre-spanish period again so myths, legends, and folktales are hard to classify and often overlap. Kaya nakikita nyo kanina, parang, parang pang legend yun, pero nasa myth siya, ano, nagkaka, nagkakaroon siya ng maliit na, ano, na, na pagitan. So nahihirapan tayong, ano siya, i-identify alone, ano kailang na ano siya medyo may overlap siya sa ating ano definition so imagine a line or continuum as illustrated below which with an with an a historical account based on facts at one end and myths or cultural folktales on the others on the other as you progress towards the mythical or folktale end of the line what an event symbolizes to people or what they feel about it becomes of greater historical significance than the facts which become less important. By the time you reach the far end of the spectrum, the, the story has taken a life of its own and the facts of the original event, if there if, uh, ever were any, have become almost irrelevant. It is a message that is important. So makikita natin na, paano nagkaroon ng, ng pagkakagulo sa definition yung myths at saka folktales kasi yung lahat ng myths at folktales natin uh, at legends natin eh, ay nag, um, nagmula siya sa isang historical fact ano parang occur siya at one period of uh, what at one point of time in that particular period uh, specifically we're talking about the pre-spanish literature nangyari siya uh, kaya lang as as this particular historical account happened, uh, nagkaroon siya ng effect sa mga tao. So we have the legendary occurrence. Ayan, naging parang kakaiba siya sa normal na pangyayari sa buhay ng mga tao nung panahon na yun. So naging parang legend siya. Ano, nagkakaiba siya sa pangkaraniwan. And eventually, as time passes by, itong legend na to ay naging, nag, naging mythical event. Kasi nawala na yung... Uh, 
factual ano basis ano parang irrelevant ng factual basis kung ano ba yung totoong nangyari ang importante ay kung ano yung effect ng kwentong yun do sa mga tao na nakakarinig ng kwento so eventually it has become a mythical event or a folk tale or something like that okay so importante ay yung meaning hindi yung totoong nangyari okay so let's now move on I hope you you got what uh, I mean by that. Uh, no. So let's go to another characteristic of the Spanish literature. We have the literary forms. Uh, uh, these are passed on through the word of mouth. So isang karakteristik ng ating pre-Spanish literature, lahat ng mga binanggit ko kanina, folk tales, folk songs, uh, li uh, legends, myths, lahat ng yan ay pinasa sa mga sumunod na generation through the word of mouth. So understand na wala nga masyadong panulat noon at napakahirap makagawa ng isang panulat at napakahirap i-preserve nung mga panulat na ginawa. So examples of the uh, literary forms that were passed through word of mouth are epigrams or the salawikain riddles, bugtong or paliisipan, the chants or mga bulong, ayan, lalo may mga, yung mga witchcraft, yung mga gustong, uh, gustong mapaibig, yung mga crush-crush nila ng mga panahon niya, binubulungan nila yaan. We also have the maxims or the, when we say, talk about maxims, ito yung may mga rhyming couplets, ano, may mga tunog, uh, yung tunog niya sa huli yan ay magkaka uh, tugma. And you also have the proverbs or mga saying or kasabihan. I know. So you can just uh, research more on those things or these things uh, for further um, uh, learning. Now let's go to. So we're done with the pre-Spanish period. So nakita niyo mga examples natin uh, of the uh, literature during the pre-Spanish period and how was where the literature or how was the literature passed on to another generation. Now let us go to the. Uh, Spanish literary period. So, um, masaya na bumuhay yung mga ninuno natin. Biglang dumating yung mga Spanish. Ano nangyari sa ating literature? So, uh, dahil nga ang mga dumating sa atin mga conquistadores, ayan, and the, the, the uh, main uh, reason why the Spanish are here of course, the first reason uh, uh, that they were here to us, eh, dahil na naligaw sila, kung if we go back to the history, naligaw sila, their main purpose of going around the world is to find spices para sa mga hari nila sa Spain or sa Portugal, ano. Pero, dahil napunta sila sa Pilipinas, when they are already in the Philippines, their main reason for staying already was to, one, implant Christianity, and two, of course, have more power uh, over the Filipinos. So, ang isang karakteristik ng ating Spanish literary period is, of course, one, uh, we have the religious prose and poetry. Yan ang unang-unang mga liter literary uh, forms ng uh, Span Spanish period natin. So, examples of that... <clears throat> We also have the secular prose and poetry. So anything that does not have any explicit reference to uh, the religion. So religious, dalawa lang yung type ng ating, ano to, ng ating uh, 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 literature noong Spanish period. We have the religious and the secular. Pag religious, lahat na may kinalaman sa Bible. And we also have the secular or yung mga prose and poetry na walang kinalaman doon. So examples niya, um, and of course, uh, nang dumating yung Spanish, yung baybay natin ay napalitan ng Roman alphabet. Yan. Kaya nagkaroon na tayo ng F ano, sa Spanish natin nakuha yan. So, Roman alphabet, yung pinalit natin, inalis nila lahat. Sinunog nila lahat ng mga uh, uh, literature natin. Yung mga written literature natin, sinunog nila, sinira nila, yung mga anito and so on, pinagsisira nila. And pinalitan nila ng Roman alphabet. They also taught us the, the Christian doctrine. And of course, the other... Um, uh, religious practices. So, nawala na yung mga legends natin, nawala na yung mga bathala at mga sila, uh, yung mga kasamahan niya. Napalitan siya ng mga uh, korido, moro-moro, which also has something to do with uh, with religion. Yan yung mga pinalit sa ating history, uh, sa ating uh, literature. So, of course, our first um, literature during the Spanish literary period is the Doctrina Cristiana. Yan ang pinakaunang written uh, literature natin. Next, we have the folk songs. So, ano na nangyari sa folk songs natin um, during the Spanish period? It manifests the artistic feelings of the Filipinos and show their innate appreciation for and love of beauty. The examples are Leron Leron Sinta, Pamulinawi, Dandan Soy, and uh, so on. So, bakit itong mga ito nakaabot sa time natin? Of course, dahil sila'y naisulat sila ano, during this particular time. Okay. 
So I, I hope you still know all of these foxes from the Spanish period. Now let us go to the period of enlightenment from 1972 to 1898. So what happened during this period? As you can see, we have, uh, these are the best writers during this time, one of the best writers of, during this time, in yung uh, ilustrados. So, uh, sa history, sila yung mga Pilipino na nakapag-aral sa Espanya at uh, nagkaroon ng, ano, na-educate sila. So, because during the Spanish period, nung dinatnan tayo ng mga Espanyol, tawag nga na sa ating mga Pilipino ay unggoy, di ba? At ang tawag sa atin ay mga Indio dahil nga tayo mga illiterate daw, sabi nila. But before them, we already have our we have our way of learning things. Ano? Kaya lang, uh, uh, yung ating education ay pinilitan nila ng uh, Spanish. Siyempre naman, mahirap talagang makaunawa ng second language. Kaya ang ano nila ay akala nila ay tayo yung mga ano. Uh, may tawag pa sila sa atin mga pulpol. Ayan, ako, sa history. Kaya napakagandang pag-aralan ng history. So, uh, because this is the next generation of the, uh, of the Filipinas who were, who were um, under the Spanish uh, period. So, ito ay ano, medyo, sila, ito na yung mga Pilipino nakapag-aral na. Medyo malayo na to dun sa mga uh, unang Pilipinong dinatnan. So, this is 1872, ha? hindi 1972. Medyo nag-typo error lang ako dyan. 1872. So, what happened during this time? So, we have um, the propaganda movement, of course. This movement spearheaded mostly of the intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal, uh, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Gerasiano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Panganiban, and Pedro Paterno. So, sila yung mga sikat na mga writer natin noon. Of course, the writings were Noli Mitangre, um, Mi Ultimate Audience, and uh, so on. So, one of the pen names of uh, Jose Rizal was, were Dimas Alang, La Unla Ang, Agno, and Calambeño. Yung mga ilan sa kanyang mga uh, pen names or pseudonyms. Okay? So, now let's go to uh, another writer during this time. We have, of course, this one is, yan, meron siyang pag-ibig sa tinubuong lupa. We have, uh, kaiingat kayo at dasalan na tuksuhan. Pen names niya, Plaridel, Dolores Manapat, Piping Dilat, Siling Labuyo, Kupang, and M. Dati. Siya si, of course, Marcelo Del Pilar. Ano? Ayan, yung mga ganyang bigote, Marcelo Del Pilar yan. Ayan. We also have Fry Botod, La Iha del Fraile, and Everything is Humbug, and Talumpating Pagunita kay Columbus. 1898-1944, pen name niya ay si Diego Laura. Of course, Graciano Lopez High na yan. Sa mga hindi pa masyado nakakakilala sa inyong mga anak. Ano? Okay, so the, uh, we've uh, mentioned some of uh, the highlights during the period of enlightenment. Kaya natin tinawag na period enlightenment kasi ang representative ng literature natin sa mga panahon na yan ay mga ano na, educated na, nakapag-aral na sila. So ang mga manunulat natin yan ay may sinasabi na ano, kaya na nila mag-express ng thought nila as a Filipino using different languages and uh, exposing it to the world. Ayan, so yan yung ating mga writers. So medyo ano, na dito nagsimula yung mga paglaba natin ano, sa mga Espanyol. Next, we have, of course, when we're done with the Spanish, the next uh, in history. So, nakikita nyo, no, yung, yung connection ng literature natin tsaka ng history. Halos pareho sila ng period kasi sabi nga natin kanina kung anong pinagdadaanan ng history, yun din ang pinagdadaanan ng ating literature. Nire-represent ng literature natin kung anong pinagdadaanan ng ating history. So, now we go to the American regime. That's 1898. To 1944. So, 1898, kitang-kita nyo naman, paglaya natin sa mga Espanyol. 1944, after the Second World War. Ayan. So, let's go. Languages used in writing were Spanish pa rin. Siyempre, dahil nga naman, kaalis pa lang natin sa mga uh, Espanyol. So, Spanish pa rin ang ating language na gamit. And of course, we also use Tagalog. And the dialects of the different regions. Iba-ibang dialecto, umuso yan, the vernaculars. So, the writers in Tagalog continued their lamentations on the conditions of the country and their attempts to arouse love for one's native tongue and the writers in English imitated the themes and methods of the Americans. So, kung nakikita nyo, may dalawang, dalawang paksyon ng grupo ng manunulat during the American regime. So, we have the Filipinos who were so patriotic and uh, uh, so eager to 
um, express their lamentations kung ano ba ang nangyayari to sa Pilipinas ng mga pagkakataong yun. And we also have the writers who um, opted to use the English language in uh, in in writing their literature kasi mas nakikita nilang mas maiintindihan sila ng mas malaking audience kapag English ang ginamit nilang language sa pagsusulat nila ng literatura. So, we have three time frames in the American regime, the period of reorientation 1898 to 1910. Kaya siya reorientation parang ibinabalik yung mga Pilipino sa uh, kung sino sila. Kasi nga, di ba, we're under the Spanish period, the Spanish era. Uh, naging maka-Spanyol ang mga Pilipino. Parang na, ano, na-disorient ang mga Pilipino kung sino nga ba sila at ano nga ba sila bilang tao. So, in this particular period of time in the American region, nire-reorient tayo, mga Pilipino, of who we are and what we are um, as Filipinos. Then, we also have the period of imitation. This, this is 1910 to 1924. Kaya natin tinawag na period of imitation ito. Ito yung time na ang mga literatura natin ay kinokopya lang natin or uh, uh, ini-imitate. Yan, kinokopya natin mula sa mga foreign writers. So, makikita nyo may mga, yung mga sikat na writers from America, may mga equivalent silang writers sa Pilipinas. Uh, kahit nga sa mga songs, eh, ganun eh, di ba? Sa mga, sa, sa music natin, uh, meron silang uh, kinokopyang writer sa, or kinokopyang singer sa Pilipinas din, para may representative sila. And then, we also have the third period, the self, of the period of self-discovery and growth, 1925 to 1941. Itong particular time na ito sa literatura natin sa American region, ano na, na-discover ng mga Pilipino kung ano ba sila, at nakita nila kung gaano ka ka-diverse, ka-dynamic ang pagiging Pilipino nila na hindi tayo nakukulong sa isang box lang, na hindi tayo nakukulong sa isang lengguahe lang ng pagsusulat o sa isang uh, uh, way lang o isang anyo lang ng pagsusulat. So, na-discover na ng, kaya maraming marami na tayo mga Filipino writers na sumikat ng mga panahon na to. They, they even get awards from the respective award-giving bodies, not only in the Philippines, but also abroad. So, ito yung time na yan. So, we have the period of self-discovery and growth. So, one particular uh, person who's really popular during this time is Lope K. Santos. Uh, of course, ang mga sinulat niya, ang sikat ay banag at sikat. Si Lope K. Santos, uh, siya yung nagpanimula rin ng paraan ng pagsusulat natin ng, uh, um, um, ng sa, yung sa wika natin, ano, yung pagsulat, paggamit natin ng wika natin. Ano, okay. We also have, ayan, walang sugat, and of course, uh, yung kay Paz Marquez Benitez, yung pat, mga patay na between, or dead stars. Ayan, may, ano, may English version yan, yan yung, yung patay na between ni, ano, ni Paz Marquez Benitez. So these are the different uh, popular writings during this time. Okay, now we're done with the American regime. So in Japanese period, uh, the Filipino poetry during this period, uh, the common theme of most poems during the Japanese occupation was nationalism, country, love, life in the barrier state, religion, and the arts. Okay, the three types of poems uh, that um, emerged during the Japanese period are, of course, one, haiku. Ayan, alam na alam niyo yan kasi hanggang ngayon ay uh, inaaral niyo yan. So a poem of free verse, uh, that was made up of 17 syllables divided into three lines. Ayan. So, yun ang ating, ano, yun ang ating haiku. Next, we also have the tanaga. Uh, it's like the haiku, but it is short and it had measure and rhyme. And of course, we have the karaniwang anyo are the usual form. Hindi ko na masyadong i-elaborate ito because um, this this could be another ano, another uh, discussion. But you can have the examples of this in in your module so you can see how a haiku and the tanaga look like so, example natin yan, uh, ang haiku isang pan panitikang tula na nagmula sa bansang hapon habang ang tanaga naman ay halintulad ng haiku dito sa Pilipinas. Ayan, parang ano yun, yung, yung uh, kinuha ng version. Ano? So, isang uri ng maikling tula binubuo ng tatlong taludtod na may supat na 575. Ang tema ng haiku ay kalikasan. So, example natin ng haiku, ulilang damo sa tahimik na ilog, halika sinta. So, pag binilang nyo yaan, 
yung yung syllables niyan ay 575 ano ang ang bilang niyan 5 na syllable yung unang linya 7 na syllables yung um uh, pangalawa at lima yung panghuli so, yeah. at usually ang uh, tema niyan ay kalikasan nature okay sample naman natin ng tanaga Uh, meron siyang apat na taludtod, walo o siyam na pantig sa kada taludtod. Pag sinabi nating pantig, syllables yan ha. Ayan. So, uh, ito ang example niya, alipatong lumapag, alipatong lumapag sa lupa, nagkabitak sa kahoy na lugayak, sa puso naglagablab. So, siya ay may uh, talu, uh, uh, apat na taludtod at Uh, walo o siyang napanitig. Ayan. So, i-discover nyo kung paano ginawa yung uh, tanaga. And tanaga would have different uh, themes. Ano, pwede siya sa iba't ibang theme. Okay, we also have uh, still, we are still in the Japanese period. So, we also have the Philippine literature in English. Ayan. Because of the strict prohibition imposed by the Japanese in the writing and publishing of the works in English, Philippine literature in English experienced a dark period. For the first 20 years, many books were published both in Filipino and in English. So, isang dapat yung tandaan sa Japanese period, pinagbawal tayong magsulat ng Uh, Filipino at saka English nito. So, medyo, ano, medyo restricted ang pag-print at pagsusulat ng literatura nitong panahon na. New Filipino literature, Philippine literature in Tagalog was revived during this period. Most themes in the writings dealt with Japanese brutalities, the poverty of life under the Japanese government, and the brave guerrilla or guerrilla exploit. So, ito yung nilalaman ng ating uh, ng ating literature ng time na to ano puro mga mga brutal na pinagagawa sa atin ng mga hapon and it's really good if you can find literatures like this or are written literatures like this para mabasa niyo no? now we're done with the japanese period let us go to the period of activism so in this particular period of activism this happened 1970 to 1972 bakit kaya may period of activism dito So, in this particular time, the youth became vocal with their sentiments, their demand a change or they demand a change in the government and was manifested in the bloody demonstrations and the sidewalk expression and also in literature. So, ito na yun. Nag, <clears throat> ito yung time na ang literatura natin na hindi na nakakahon sa libro, hindi nakakahon sa sa mga nobela, sa mga tula, pero yung literatura natin makikita mo na sa mga post sa mga ano sa mga placards ano ito yung time ng mga makibaka ayan yung uh, nagsusulat sila ng mga ganung ano mga ganung um, panulat ano nauso yung mga pamphlets mga leaflets pero it's also part of the literature so this is the part uh, period of activism kung maalala nyo ito yung period na to yung uh, ano um, nabubuo na yung ano yung um, Um, kaisipan ng mga kabataang Pilipino laban sa administrasyon. Ano? So one of the particular or popular uh, singers during this time is Freddie Aguilar. Ayan. Yung mga, mga songs nila ay tungkol sa pagiging Pilipino, pagiging um, uh, patriotic na mga Pilipino. Of course, the uh, examples of the movies, ayan, may mga movies na tayo. No? So we have Ligaw na Bulaklak and so on. Okay, so now let's go to the period of New Society, 1972 to 1980. Yun ako. Ibang period na to. This is actually the Marcus period. Ano? So the period of the New Society started on September 21, 1972. The Carlos Palanca Awards continue to give annual awards. Poems dealt with patient, patience, regard for na nature or native culture, customs and beauties of nature and the surroundings. Newspapers donned new form. So, iba na ang itsura kahit yung newspaper natin, nag-iba na ang itsura niya. Ah. So, this is also the time when Carlos Palanca Awards uh, for Literature um, began. Yan. Ito yung mga uh, singers natin. Examples, we have Wasang Pagita. If I know that you know the songs, uh, uh, their songs. If not, you can ask your father or your lolo, your grandfather and grandmother, and they know the songs of this Uh, of these singers because this were their time okay then of course we have uh, uh, i think this this is uh, uh hot dogs itong singer na to yung may kanta ng manila okay so that is uh those are the examples of um 
uh, the period of the new society. Ayan. So, ano siya nagbago. Kaya new society nagbago na sila ng ng ano ng ng anyo ng paraan ng pagpapakita ng literatura, no. Okay. Now let's go to the period of the Third Republic, 1981 to 1985. After 10 years of military rule and some uh, changes in the life of the Filipino, which started under the new society, martial law was at last lifted on January 2, 1981. The Philippines became a new nation and this former president, uh, Marcos, called the New Republic of the Philippines. So poems during this period of the Third Republic were romantic and revolutionary. M many Filipino songs dealt with themes that were true to life, like those of grief, poverty, aspirations for freedom, love of God, and of country, and fellow men. So uh, this is during the martial law time, ano, itong the period of the Republic. Ano, so pag, ang, uh, 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 this is post-martial law, sorry, post-martial law siya, ano, nung nalift na yung martial law. So uh, examples niyan, we have the Emperor's New Underwear, isa sa mga writer, may mga, may mga iba na tayong mga, ano, mga form of writings, no? Yan, Gulong Mampalad. This is actually, a, this one is um, a, a radio show, I think, ano, yung Gulong Mampalad. Then of course, we have the VSTN Company, yung, uh, yung mga kilalang mga ano natin, Tito Vic and Joey, this, this are this time, uh, their time. Is the, their time, ayan. So, nagsimula sila ng mga panahon na yan. So, now let's go and uh, have the post-EDSA revolution, 1986 to 1995. I hope you are... Um, you are you are following what I am discussing here ah, kasi yung ibang mga nandito sa slides natin ay wala dyan sa module. So, dinadagdagan ko yung information so you could have a better look of what each period is. Ano? Okay. So, let's have post-EDSA Revolution 1. So, history took another twist once more. The Filipino uh, people regained their independence, which they lost 20 years ago. Siyempre, 20 years ago, sinasabi nila, ito yung time, Marcus time ito. So, we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot um, argue with the, uh, what is written in the books, but of course, we can also still um, re research and know what really happened. I know. So, I'm just stating this because uh, it's, it's part of the discussion. I know. In four days from February uh, 21 to 25, 1986, the so-called uh, people power, lakas ng bayan, prevailed. So, I know... Um, most of you are not uh, alive yet. Or maybe your parents uh, were already alive during this time. And maybe you can ask them about this. So in the short span of the existence of the real Republic of the Philippines, several changes already became evident. It was noticed in the Filipinos, new Filipino songs, newspapers, speeches, and even in the, the television programs. The now crony newspaper, uh, that enjoyed the, an overnight increase in circulation were the Inquirer, Malaya, and the Pil uh, People's Journal. Ito yung mga sikat na mga ano no, um, newspaper uh, during the post-EDSA revolution. So tapos na to yung February 25, uh, 21 to 25, kaya nga meron kayong, kayong holiday ng February 25, di ba? Uh, it's because of this one. Okay, now that we're done with the post-EDSA revolution, so after noon, medyo nag, ano, medyo nag, um, naglaylo ang literature natin so it's 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 all the same na lang uh, until it came to that time when the technology evolved ano nagkaroon ng pagbabago kasi naka, yung mga technology from the other countries ay finally nakarating na sa Pilipinas ano so as you can see medyo late tayo na late tayo na dadat na ng ano ng ng uh, ng technology so 21st century period, 2001 to present. 2001, nagsimula ng maging kilala ang cellphone sa Pilipinas. Ano? But before this time, mga pager, pager pa, hindi pa masyadong ano, nag-iba yung ating literature. So during this time, the new trends have been used and introduced to meet the needs and tastes of the new generation. 21st century learners are demanded to be ICT inclined to complete or uh, to compete with the style and format of writing as well. New codes or lingos are used to add play war in the literary pieces produced nowadays. So, marami na. So, yung literary, 
literature natin can be found in the movies, booklets, infographics, mga sketch natin, visual note-taking, animation, and so on and so forth. Napakarami na. May mga vlogging na, may mga sa time nga natin, may vlogging pa, may podcasts, and so on. Nako, ang dami-dami na. No? So, nabago na siya dahil sa technology. And that is the reason why as 21st century learners, you should also be inclined with the ICT para itong mga literature natin na to na uh, nag evolve ngayon ay mag maging parte rin kayo at makapag-ambag din kayo. Who knows, maybe one of you will be uh, one of the best writers of our generation. Who knows, right? So, napaka-importante na uh, meron tayong contribution doon. So, the things that you upload in the internet are also part of the literature that we have in the Philippines right now. So, kung ano man yung iniaambag nyo sa sa history natin or sa literature natin, sana maganda yun. Ano? Sana may kapupulutan yung mga susunod na generation. Kasi para pag nakita nila yung mga uploads nyo ngayon, yung mga gawa nyo ngayon na part ng ating literature, sana yung ano, nakaka-proud sa atin ano, bilang uh, part ng ating literature. Okay, so uh, you can see here the different uh, examples of uh, the 21st century uh, uh, period literature. So yun yung mga example natin, yung mga, uh, mga posters and so on. And um, uh, we have the infographics and many others. You can still look at the uh, examples uh, written in your module so you can have a, a, a deeper understanding of or wider understanding of what are the um, literary forms of the 21st century period in the Philippines. Okay, so that's it for the discussion of the uh, different uh, periods of the literary uh, Philippine literature. Now let us go to activity one. You can uh, go to your uh, answer sheet, have your answer sheet and answer the questions given. And so for activity one, you will uh, uh, connect or you will uh, give the uh, writers of the different uh, literary uh, pieces in the next page. And you will write them. Sino, yung tat sino sa tatlong yun ang may sulat na mga ito? I have given you the, ex uh, the discussion before this slide. So let's check if you have answered correctly. Okay, for number one, two, and so on. So uh, please check if you have answered correctly. If not, uh, if, if all of you have gotten 10, that is very good. That means you have listened to me while I was discussing or you have um, given attention to what I was saying uh, a while back. If not naman, it's all right. You can just go back to the... Uh, to the um, video and uh, try to uh, remember the uh, the writings connected with the different writers given. Okay, for assessment one, this is in your answer sheet also. Just write the characteristics of the different literary uh, period during the Spanish period or the different characteristics of the literature during the Spanish period. This is what you're going to do for assessment one. So let you na lang dyan sa inyong answer sheet or activity sheet. For activity two, the thinker's view, we're going to give uh, the answer for the following questions. Um, there's also a, a, a space provided in your activity sheet for answering this particular activity. And next one for the assessment, you're going to um, analyze and interpret the emotions of the Filipinos uh, in the situa and situations of the country found in the paragraphs in the song Ang Bayan Po. This, that is also in your module. Just look at that and um, you can uh, use the space provided in your activity sheet. All right, to concretize our discussion for this uh, lesson, let us have the uh, main points of our discussion. So for what I have learned, remember that one, the pre-Spanish literature is characterized by legends, folk tales, the epic age, and folk songs. Two, the propaganda movement in 1872 to 19, 1896 was superheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal and the others. For number three, in the American regime, Americans influenced Filipino writers to use or to write using the English language. 
English as a medium of instruction was introduced in the schools as the intellectual language of the education. So this is the uh, contribution of the Americans to us, I know, that we are using English in our schools and that Filipinos are writing in English. And uh, next one, uh, the period of activism. In the period of activism, campus newspapers were written to show their protest. They held pens and wrote on placards in red paint in the equivalent of the word makibaka or to dare. So this during the period of activism. Remember also that during this period, yung mga school paper natin ay nagsimula. Ano? Next one, we have the period of new society. Poems dealt with patience, regard for the nature culture or native culture, customs and beauties of nature and surroundings. Six, the period of Third Republic was romantic and revolutionary. Seven, the post-EDSA one noticed the new Filipino songs in the newspapers, in the speeches, and even in the television, television programs. And, of course, for the last one, as a, a grade 12 Filipino learner, in what way can you show a sense of adaptability in the diverse Philippine, Philippine literary history? State your answer in three to five paragraphs, paragraph essay. So you have a, uh, there, there is a, a, a part there in your answer sheet to do that. So uh, just to answer that, I guess there's a point allotted for that particular, for this particular activity. So I hope you will uh, do this because this is one of your performance activities, okay? And that would be all for our lesson one. So I will cut the uh, presentation for a moment so that I will, so that I can um, uh, record another video for lesson two of your module one. So that's about it. Thank you so much for um, uh, learning with me. And I hope you enjoyed our discussion with lesson one entitled Geographic, Linguistic, and Ethnic Dimensions of the Philippine Literary History from the Pre-Colonial to the Contemporary. Again, I am Ma'am Nea. Thank you so much for learning with me. See you again on our next video lesson for the 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world.